What's up, beautiful people? It is Charity Israel here, the creator of the social media ministry, Love Lives Free, ministry committed to encouraging people to love God, to love themselves, to love others, and to create disciples that do the same thing. We are in day four of our 30 days of prayer. Um, we're going to be praying concerning the spirit of fear and just concerning, um, hey, Charity, how are you, love? What's up, K Mommy? Hey, perfect underscore well, perfect period underscore period imperfection. Hey, Danny underscore MC21. I would encourage you to tag. I would encourage you to um, share this live. If you know anyone who has been struggling with confidence, anyone who's been struggling with the spirit of fear, I'm believing today as we go to the Lord in prayer that we're going to find ourselves being more confident in who he called us to be. We're going to find ourselves more confident in what he called us to do. And so um, I'm not going to prolong it we're going to go ahead and get into it if this is your first time tuning in hey my sweet lola if this is your first time tuning in how i typically pray is i i read a scripture then i pray according to how i believe the spirit is leading me to pray um also i encourage anyone uh in the comments feel free the topic is fear so if there's a prayer that you want to put in the encourage um put in the comments to encourage someone make sure that it is um focused on overcoming fear. If there's a scripture that you want to put in the comments to encourage someone, make sure that it's um, focused on fear. Again, fear is the topic. So all the encouragement, all of the scriptures and all the many prayer posts that you may put in the comments as I'm praying that needs to be centered around overcoming the spirit of fear. Um, so happy to have you guys on. Hey, oh beauty. So let's get into this time of prayer. Father, we love you. We bless you. We honor you and we adore you. We thank you, God, that there is none like you in all the earth. We thank you, Father God, that your love reigns supreme. It rules supreme. We thank you, Father God, that your care and your concern for your people, it can be trusted. We thank you, God, that everything pertaining to our life and godliness, Lord God, you are in absolute control over it. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that as we come to you today in our time of prayer that you would be glorified i thank you father god that no flesh will glory in your presence but this time of prayer this time of specific prayer father god will be um the chain breaker that many of us have been been needing off of our life as it pertains to fear god your word says in psalm 56 and 3 when i am afraid i put my trust in you in god whose word i praise in god i trust i will not be afraid what can man do to me your word also says in psalms 118 5 through 7 in my distress i called to the lord and he answered me and set me free the lord is on my side i will not be afraid what can can man do to me the lord is on my side he is my helper therefore i will look in triumph on those who hate me i would encourage you to put in the comments that the lord is on my side make that declaration that it is important when we're talking about coming up uh, against the spirit of fear when we're talking about coming against those who have set themselves as an enemy against us that we remember the lord is on our side and because he is on our side because he is our helper we do not have to fear father god we thank you lord god that psalms 118 5 through 7 and psalm 1 and psalm 56 and 3 will be a reality in the life of the believer that as we make up our minds lord god not to fear but put our total trust in you that we will not be disappointed we will not be put to shame we will not be dismayed father god i thank you in the name of jesus that your word says in my distress i called on the lord and he answered and he set me free so father god we call on you lord as it pertains to the spirit of fear we admit god that we are fearful we admit god that we are anxious we admit father god that we um are we lack confidence in an area of our life and father we are asking you today to take this from us we are asking you today as your word says in our time of distress to remove this thing from us set us free from the spirit of fear if you are a person who is dealing with the spirit of fear i would encourage you to go ahead and make your confession even now and say god um i am fearful or god i i wrestle with the spirit of fear put that out there because the word says that when we make our confessions he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us and sometimes it's not just about sin but it's about the emotional our emotional state what we're dealing with what we're struggling with and for some of you because you have not went ahead and acknowledged look i'm afraid and and some people may even suggest to you that you don't have faith 
because you're afraid. Um, fear is not the opposite of faith. The opposite of fear is love. And we'll find that out in scripture as we continue in this time of prayer. So your issue is not a faith issue. Your issue may be a trust in God issue. Your issue may be trusting the love of God in your life concerning this particular thing that you're facing that has gripped you with fear. And so we are believing that as we pray today, that the spirit of fear will have to find somebody else to intimidate. It will have to find somebody else to torment. It would have to find somebody else to come against because you're going to walk in your power. You're going to walk in your dominion. You're going to walk in your authority as a child of the most high God. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will surely help you. I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. I'll read it again. It says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will surely help you and I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. Father God, we thank you that whatever we are fearing, it cannot compare to you. We thank you, God, that whatever we are fearing, it cannot contend to you. We thank you, God, that whatever we are fearing cannot stand against you. But God, we thank you in the name of Jesus that every diagnosis has to bow to the name of Jesus. Every financial problem has to bow to the name of Jesus. Every emotional issue you has to bow to the name of Jesus. Every mental illness has to bow to the name of Jesus. Every prediction that opposes the truth of your word concerning our life has to bow to the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you that even fear must submit to that great name that is Jesus. Even fear has to yield itself to the great name of Jesus. And we thank you, oh God, that fear must come under the submission of our great God. And we command fear to go in the name of Jesus. It has to leave. It cannot torment any longer. It is no longer permitted here. And I would encourage you, even in this moment, declare in um, the comments, I break my allegiance with fear because some of us have come into agreement with this thing. Some of us have said we will never get past this. Some of us have said, you know, I can't see myself beyond this situation. And because you have made that declaration, you have um, pronounced a word curse over your situation and you have come into agreement with fear. But I'm believing that by the spirit of God on today, as you make a decision to say, I break my allegiance with fear. I release myself from the spirit of fear. It will no longer have any control of me. I will no longer allow it to be a companion in my life. I will no longer be married to it. You have to begin to declare these things because it has got, it is, it is, um, taken, um, it has a foothold in your life and it is because you've given permission to it because we as believers, we don't have to live subject to fear, fear. We don't have to be a captive to fear. We don't have to be a prisoner of fear. Fear is not of God. First John four and eight. 18 says there is no fear in love but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment the one who fears is not made perfect in love so father god we ask that you forgive us for being afraid we ask that you forgive us lord god for being afraid we ask that you forgive us for being afraid and today great god we ask that your perfect love be perfected in our lives so that we believe you so that we do not have to be prisoners to fear. We don't have to, Lord God, live in torment to fear. But Lord God, we would trust in your love for us. The word of God again tells us in 1 John 4, 4, 18, that there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out all fear. And so the thing that is opposite of fear is not faith. The thing that is opposite of fear is love. Love has not been placed in your heart properly. Love has not been deeply rooted on the inside of you. Because if you trust truly believe the love of God for your life, you wouldn't be afraid because you know that his love, he would never leave you nor forsake you. You know that he would provide all that you need. When you begin to know who your God is and love him from that place, you won't fear the things that the enemy has been suggesting that, um, the, the fearful suggestions that he's been bringing your way, you will trust the love of God. And so we just thank God that even now, and matter of fact, I would encourage you make this declaration. I receive the love of God. I 
embrace the love of God. I accept the love of God because we see in scripture that it is the perfect love of God that casts out all fear. And Chelsea, you're asking about anxiety. We're talking about fear right now, which is a part of anxiety. I would encourage you if it is a deep thing to go see a psychiatrist, go see a psychologist. Um, but if it is something that, you know, you need to deal with your mind, I would encourage you to pull down that stronghold of anxiety by getting some scriptures to um, find out what the word of God says concerning it. Stand on those scriptures until your mind is transformed and you believe that your good God will keep you. You believe that your good God will sustain you. You believe that your good God will provide for you. You believe that your good God will never leave and forsake you. And when you believe those things, fear cannot come. Anxiety cannot come because you have peace of mind because your mind is stayed on him. So anybody that's wrestling with anxiety, and again, if it's not a chemical imbalance that requires you going to see a therapist, but it's more so because you continue to allow your mind to repeat different thoughts, you're going to have to make a decision to get control of your thought life. And you're going to have to begin to declare what the word of God is concerning your, what the word of God says concerning your peace, what the word of God says concerning your joy, what the word of God says concerning provision, what the word of God says concerning your health. You're going to have to make a decision to become an active participant in your deliverance because God has already made it available through Jesus Christ. So anxiety does not have to be your Lord. Anxiety does not have to be your, um, your um, prison ward. You don't have to be in prison to anxiety. You can live free from that too, because it's, it's a friend of fear. And, and we understand that perfect love casts out fear. Second Timothy one and seven. This is also a scripture that you can use for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. If you are living in fear, it is not of God because the word of God tells us he's given us power power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind is part of your covenant as a child of the most high God. Power is part of your covenant as a child of the most high God. Love is part of your covenant as a child of the most high God. Fear is not part of your portion. It is not my portion. And I would encourage you to put that in the comments. Fear is not my portion. It does not belong to me, but love, power, and a sound mind. That is my portion. Righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. That is my portion. That is my portion as a believer. And you're going to have to make up in your mind to stand on the word of God until you see transformation in your thought life, until you see transformation in your finances, until you see transformation in your health, until you see transformation in your relationships, you're going to have to make a decision to get into alignment with what God's word says concerning you and do not get off of it until you see it manifested in your life. Father God, we thank you that fear has to bow we thank you that anxiety has to bow. We thank you that worry has to bow. We thank you that fear and frustration and regret and remorse, it has to bow. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus that everything must bow to that great name. And we thank you, Lord God, that you have heard our prayer and you are answering our petition as it pertains to fear. We thank you, Lord God, that there's no reason to fear man. We thank you, Lord God, that there's no reason to fear a, a medical prediction or report. We thank you that there's no reason to fear a financial forecast. We thank you that there's no reason to fear anything in this life because you are with us and your word tells us that you never leave us or forsake us. Your word also says that you're not like man that you should lie nor the son of man that you should repent. If you have said it shall it not be so. And so father, we thank you that if we have a promise that power, love, and a sound mind belongs to us, that Lord God, we will do what is necessary to walk in power to walk in love and to walk in that sound mind. Father, forgive us for being timid as it pertains to this covenant that you've given us. Forgive us for being allegiance with the enemy concerning the things that you have died and set us free from. Forgive us for coming to alignment with fear, coming into alignment with anxiety, receiving and accepting those thoughts instead of casting down every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ and the, and the power of God and the knowledge of Christ. Father, forgive us. Forgive us for accepting the lies of the enemy that suggests those things, Lord God, that are contrary to your word and what you've spoken over our lives. Father, forgive us for coming to alignment with things, people, and places, and, 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 and uh, music, Lord God, that continues to perpetuate fear in our lives. Forgive us for every allegiance that we have established, Lord God, that allows fear to run rampant in our lives. 
Forgive us, great God. And we thank you, Lord, that as we come into the truth of your word, that we will walk in freedom, we will walk in power, we will walk in love, and we will walk in a sound mind from this day forward. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We thank you. Love, power, and peace is my portion. The word says love, power, and a sound mind. It belongs to you. And it is time that you take your birthright. It is time that you take what belongs to you back. And I would encourage you to. You can't be asking God to deliver you from a spirit of fear. And you can't be asking God to remove anxiety. And all you watch is murder mysteries. All you watch is law and order. All you watch is stuff that perpetuates fear. You constantly entertaining stuff that, that produces and breeds fear in your life and you want God to deliver you from something that you're coming into agreement with because you allow your eye gates to entertain it. You allow your ear gates to entertain it. You give your emotions over to this stuff when you watch this stuff and you listen to this stuff and you're wondering why you can't get rid of fear. I'm telling you, you want fear to leave your life. You're going to have to begin to walk circumspectively before the Lord and you're going to have to begin to take accountability in the areas of your life that you know you have let fear in i know it's entertaining but if you are afraid you you live in constant fear you may need to stop watching law and order for a minute for a season until you can get your mind right and until the imagine until your imagination is rooted in peace until you can get some stuff established in here you may need to turn off television you're afraid of where the world is going, but you stay watching the news. You don't have to watch the news. You don't have to live in, in constant fear of what's happening, in for what's happening tomorrow. By all means, be informed and more so be informed so that you can pray. But don't be sitting up here watching stuff that brings you anxiety and then come around talking about asking God to deliver you from anxiety. You are a participant in your own anxiety. You're a participant in your own fear. So if you want to be set free from fear, you want to be set free from anxiety, don't only just align yourself up with what the word of God says, but begin to look in the areas of your life and ask Holy Spirit, wherever I have an allegiance to fear, wherever I have an allegiance to anxiety, wherever I have an allegiance to worry and frustration, whether I'm watching it in television or where I'm listening, whether I'm listening to it in a song or in music or listening to it on a podcast or listening to it on the radio, Holy Spirit revealed that to me so that I can break an allegiance with that thing so that peace can be established and rooted in my heart again, so that joy can be established and rooted in my heart again. You're going to have to make a decision to let go of some stuff so that you can experience the peace that Christ died for you to experience. The word of God says that he keeps in perfect peace those who keep their mind stayed on him. And I can guarantee you when people come to me and they talk about, oh, I'm anxious or, you know, I live with a, a lot of anxiety. I live with a lot of fear. I'm sure of it that you're not spending time in the presence of God. And more importantly, I'm sure that you're not convinced of who your great God is. Because when you put your mind on the fact, for example, you know, you got a, a diagnosis from the doctor that says it may be cancer. It may be this. It may be that. We don't deny the um, diagnosis. We don't sit up here and act like we did not hear that thing. But we begin to meditate on the fact that God is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. So what I do is instead of focusing and fixating my mind on what, what the doctors have declared, I begin to go and find out what scriptures say about God being a healer. And then I put my mind on the fact that he is a healer. I begin to meditate on those scriptures. And as I meditate, even in the midst of going through cancer, even in the midst of going through some different difficult diagnosis and some difficult thing that I've been experiencing. My mind is fixed on the fact that God is a healer. And when I focus on who he is, he keeps me in perfect peace, even in the midst of this ridiculous situation. That's why we hear when the word talks about, he'll give you peace that surpasses all understanding. Well, that is because you have a step, you have decided in your mind to put your peace on something that is greater than your prognosis, to put your peace on something that is greater than your diagnosis, to Put your peace on something that is greater than your current situation. You decided in your heart, in your mind, and in your spirit that I'm putting my mind on something that is greater than my current circumstance. That's why I get to have peace that surpasses all understanding because I put my mind on something that is greater than the circumstance that I'm dealing with. You're going to have to make a decision. 
If peace is important to you, do what is necessary to get this peace. You may be a person, you're fearful of the financial situation. First of all, I need you to go ahead and confess to the Father. If you know you've been raggedy in your financial, you have not been a good steward of your finances, first go to the Father and make that confession. God, look, I have not been the best steward of my finances. I've been out here doing the most for all the wrong reasons, put my money in bad places, and as a result, I'm in this situation. Once you make your confession, then you begin to ask the Lord, give me insight, give me wisdom on how to get out of this predicament. And then begin to get what, um, find what the scripture says concerning the Lord being a provider and trust that because you have come into agreement, you have first acknowledged, you've taken responsibility that you're in this position because of your own will and the things that you've done. And then you, you partner with Holy Spirit and you ask him to give you solutions on how to get out of it. Then you also make sure that you get connected to somebody that can help you deal with your finances. They can help you, um, budget better. They can help you become a better steward and then while you're going through this process at the same time you're putting your mind on the fact that God is a provider that he continues to make a way out of no way that he's the God who supplies all of our needs according to his riches and glory so I'm even able to sustain peace in the midst of this financial dilemma and this financial situation because I place my thoughts I place my mind above something that is greater than what I'm dealing with the only way we get peace is if we put our mind on something that is greater than our current circumstance if you keep your eyes on the situation if you keep your eyes on the prediction if you keep your eyes on the diagnosis if you keep your eyes on everything that is contrary to who and what God wants to be in your life peace will not be your portion fear will be your lot anxiety will be your lot worry will be your lot but we as believers, we get a choice in the matter. And it is my hope and prayer that moving forward, we will choose peace. We will choose joy. We will choose righteousness. And we will choose trusting in our God. Because the word of God says, when I am afraid in Psalms 56 and 3, I put my trust in you. In God whose word I praise. In God I trust. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Isaiah 41 and 10 says, do not fear for I am with you. Do not be afraid for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will surely help you and I will uphold you with my right hand of righteousness. You have a great God, a wonderful God, a loving God that is committed to keeping his word to his children. But we have to commit ourselves to studying his word, staying focused on his word until we see those things manifested in our life. Fear does not have to be our portion as children of God. And I pray that we will be in pursuit of walking in power, living in love, and having a sound mind at all times because we've been afforded the right to have it through Jesus Christ. Do not miss out on the privilege of living in peace in the midst of a storm because you choose to focus on the storm instead of the one who provides peace. Do not miss out on having provision because you choose to focus on what you need versus on the one who can supply all your needs. Do not miss out on joy because you choose to focus on the current situation instead of focusing on the one who is the joy of the Lord is our strength. So he gives us strength from his joy. And I'm encouraging us to be in full pursuit of what has been made available to us through Jesus Christ. Don't miss out on it. Don't miss out on it. That is all I have for today. I hope and I pray that it has encouraged you. It has um, uplifted you. Those scriptures that I used, I'll go ahead and read them again. And I would encourage you, not read them again, but I'll reference them. I would encourage you to make it your personal responsibility to go. If you know you're dealing with um, anxiety, you know you're dealing with worry. All you have to do is Google scriptures on worry, scriptures on anxiety. And begin to look at what the, the word of God says and take those, take a few scriptures, get you about two or three and begin to stand on the ones that really minister to your heart. Focus on those scriptures until that becomes your reality. Take God at his word and remind him of his word. That's, that's why I, I pre, I pray the word. That's why I'm, and I continue to do it. Like I found that I have more victory sooner 
when I take God's word back to him and I remind him, Father, your word says in Psalms 56 and 3, if you did this for David and you have no respect to person, surely you can do it for me. Your word says in Isaiah 41 and 10, if you did this for Isaiah, you don't have respect to person, surely you can do it for me. Take God's word back to him and watch what he does in your life when you do that. Again, if there's anything that I said on this live that has caused you any confusion, know that you can always hit me up in my inbox. It is never over on IG. My DM, it is never my desire for you to leave a live confused. And if you do, I failed you. So please give me the opportunity to help you better understand my position on a matter or, you know, a subject, whatever it is we're talking about. You can always hit me up in my inbox, okay? My DM, whatever it is. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We'll be back here um, tomorrow for day five. I do not know exactly the time, but I, as I said in day one, I will always post at least an hour before the time of prayer so that you guys have enough time to connect. I like Miss um, 7965. She says, I choose peace, joy, because I trust in the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Choose it. You have to choose it every day. And excuse me, yeah, I can guarantee you the enemy is going to come. Now that we didn't have this prayer, he is about to turn it up a notch. So don't be surprised when stuff comes and you instantly feeling fear. You may end, we may end this live and then something comes that tries to rob you of what just take, just what just took place. But again, you use the word of God. You stand on the word of God. You remind whatever that is, 2 Timothy 1 through 7, for God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and sound mind. 1 John 1 and 8, there is no fear in love. Perfect love has been rooted in me. I will not fear. I will not. I refuse. Fear is a choice. And it is my prayer that you will stop choosing fear when you can choose love, when you can choose peace, when you can choose hope, when you can choose joy. There are many other options besides fear. And I pray that you will begin to see your options and choose something different. Um, those scriptures for fear, uh, Psalm 56 and 3. That's Psalm 56 and 3. Psalm 118, 5 through 7. Psalm 118, 5 through 7. Isaiah 41, 10. Isaiah 41, 10. Um, 1 John 4, 18. 1 John 4, 18. 2 Timothy 1 and 7, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. So you can take those scriptures, um, make them your meditation. If you've been struggling with fear, um, focus on them, get them up, put them around your, 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 um, your house, put them in your car. I would also encourage you, if you have an audio recorder, just um, quote those scriptures a few times and let it play back, you know. Let it play back and, and minister to your heart, minister to your spirit until you believe God's word as it pertains to fear not being your portion in this life. You don't have to live prisoner to it. And I pray that you won't. Also, uh, tomorrow, you can see me and the Christie Show live at Atlanta Comedy Theater for the Mother's Day show, 4 a.m. I mean, 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. I'm not sure if there are any more tickets left. But you can go to atlantacomedytheater.com. They should, um, if there are, they will have them available. I know the last time I checked, I think it was about 10 or so. So you may want to do that. I'm sure that they will not be available at the door. So if you want to um, have a good laugh on Mother's Day or you um, need a last minute gift for Mother's Day, it would be a good one if you're in the Atlanta area. We're going to have a good time. Um and yeah, that's it. I hope y'all have a great one. I will see y'all tomorrow. And again, if there's anything I said on this live that left you confused, know that you can hit me up in my DM, okay? Because I want to answer your questions to make sure that there's clarity so that you can move forward, okay? Y'all have a lovely evening and I will see y'all tomorrow.